Good morning. I'm so glad you've joined us here today at First Baptist Church in Mount Vernon, Texas. I'm glad you're a part of our streaming service this morning. I'm in a series of messages from the life of Abraham. He is teaching us how to walk by faith. And so this morning I want you to take your copy of God's Word and I want you to find Genesis chapter 15 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 15 verse 1 and the title of this message is simply the Old Testament John 3.16. The Old Testament version of John 3.16. We're going to discover what that is today. So let me begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for the opportunity to share your word. I pray you'll speak through me, Father, the truth that you have laid on my heart, the truth that is in these verses to share with those who are watching and listening today. And Father, I pray that wherever they are, they would feel your presence, that right now they would know you are with them. Uh, you would, Father, make them aware of, of your nearness in their life, and that, Father, you would speak to them today, and that, and that their ho your Holy Spirit would speak into their life the truth that they needed to hear today. And Father, I thank you that you're going to do that. Thank you for the opportunity to, to preach today your word through this streaming service. And Father, I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said a minute ago, the title of this message is the Old Testament, John 3.16. So let's begin by quoting John 3.16. Can you say it with me wherever you are? Just out loud, if you don't mind, wherever you're sitting there. Let's say John 3.16. We probably all know it. Let's say it out loud. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, I dare say that none of you who claim to be Christians, followers of Christ, were saved without someone telling you that verse. It's hard to get saved without someone telling you John 3.16 and explaining to you the meaning of that verse. For God so loved the world, that means the people of the world. That's you and me. For God so loved the world, the people of the world, that he gave his only son, that's Jesus. That whoever believes in him, whoever, that's you, put your name in there. That whoever believes in, that means to put your trust in, to put your faith in. That whoever believes in him should not perish. That means you don't have to die spiritually. Perish means to die spiritually and be eternally separated from God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. That is something you receive right now. That is something that you receive. It's a brand new life, a quality of life that is possible for you to live right now. It's a life of love, a life of joy, a life of peace. John 3.16 the greatest lover, God, gave the greatest gift, His Son, and extended the greatest invitation that whoever believes and then makes the greatest promise shall not perish but have eternal life. Wow. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, today's text contains the Old Testament, John 3.16. Watch for it. Listen for it as I read. Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield and your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. 
And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said, So shall your offspring be. And Abram believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. You saw it. You you, you heard it. Yes, it's that last verse I read. The Old Testament, John 3.16, is Genesis chapter 15 and verse 6. Now, I I don't believe that this is the first moment that Abram ever believed and was counted righteous before God. The book of Hebrews makes it clear that Abram's faith relationship with God goes back to the days when he was in the Ur of the Chaldeans. It's here, though, in the 15th chapter of Genesis that Abram's belief is clearly stated for the first time. Genesis chapter 15 gives us an account in which God reaffirms Abram's faith as being genuine. More important, it shows us Abram recommitting himself to walk with God. Because a walk of faith needs a periodic recharge. In fact, that's that's my life point today. That's what I want you to remember. That's what I want you to take from this message. Here it is. Every walk of faith needs a time of renewal. Every walk of faith needs a time of renewal. That's what we've been looking at in Abram's life. We've been looking at his walk of faith. We've been looking at the things he did right and the things he did wrong. But there comes a point in everyone's walk of faith when we need to have a time where we renew our commitment to God. Every walk of faith needs a time of renewal. So I want to take you back today to that time when you first met Jesus. Do you remember it? Do you remember when your walk of faith began? I want to remind you of how it all began for you. The belief you had, the commitment you made. Now, some of you watching and listening to me may have never made that commitment. You you have yet to believe. And my prayer today is that you will believe this moment. You will believe today. My prayer is that today you will hear how to be saved. And today you will hear how to be righteous before God. And today you will make a commitment to believe and trust in Jesus Christ for the very first time. Because you're going to hear about today a God who loves you and provides for your salvation. Every walk of faith needs a time of renewal and it begins this way, remember your condition. Look again at the first three verses of of Abram's journey here. Genesis chapter 15. Look at the first three verses. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield and your reward shall be very great. But but Abram said, O Lord God, what what will you give me? For I I continue childless and, and you have given me no offspring. Do you hear Abram's condition? After these things, verse 1 begins. Probably a reference to the recent victory over the armies of Ketelamar. The Lord had to come to him and say, Fear not, Abram. Why? (laughs) Because Abram was afraid. That's why. Because Abram was afraid. Maybe Abram realized how he could have died on that battlefield. Maybe he saw how suddenly his life could end. And then verse 2 tells us he realized he was helpless to make the promises of God come true in his life. 
He, Lord, I'm still childless. Lord, I'm an old man and, and a wife who, who is past childbearing age is with me. Lord, I will never be able to do this by myself. Lord, I am helpless to pull this off. I believe Abram felt lonely and disillusioned and deeply afraid. Ten years had passed since he had been called out of the Ur of the Chaldeans. And he's tired of doing life in his own strength. His emotions were tossed about with many a conflict and many a doubt. There were fightings within and fears without. And it was at that moment that God said, Come, come Abram, I am your shield. Come Abram, I have a promise for you to claim. Do you remember what you were like when you came to Christ? You had to be in a situation similar to Abram. I'm afraid of what might happen to me. I'm afraid of dying. I'm helpless to obey your commands, O Lord. I'll never be able to pull this off without you, Lord. Do you remember your condition? Because to be saved, we must all come to that place in our lives where we say, I'm helpless, Lord. I I can't do this without you. I I admit my own inadequacies. I I admit my own sin. Let me tell you my story. My story is this. I had an experience when I was a child that made me afraid of dying. I, I, I was hit in the head by a baseball bat, swung by a college player, knocked me flat on my back, lying in the dirt, blood everywhere, all over my face. I'm bleeding and I'm yelling. I find myself yelling, am I going to die? Am I going to die? Am I going to die? At that moment, I was very much afraid of dying. (laughs) Now, I didn't die. I got nine stitches in my head right here above my left eyebrow. But I knew my sin. Even as a 10-year-old boy, I I, I knew what sin was and and, and I knew my sin. And I didn't want to die in my sin. And that experience led me quickly to a decision to place faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's my story. I don't know what what your story might be, but whatever it is this morning, I want you to remember your condition. I want you to go back to that place in your mind where you came to Christ. I want you to remember the condition that you were in. I want you to remember those things you felt and those things you realized and those things you saw. I want you to come to that place in your mind where you remember because every walk of faith needs a time of renewal and that time of renewal begins when you remember the condition you were in. Now, your season of revival, your season of renewal doesn't stop when you just remember your condition. It's got to continue. You must also revisit your confession. Revisit your confession. Look at verse 5 again. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 5. The Lord brought Abram outside and said to him, Look up towards the heaven, Abram. Number the stars if you're able to number them. And then God said to him, So shall your offspring be. In other words, Abram, you're going to have as many offspring as are the stars in the sky if you could count them. And verse 6. And Abram believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. God took Abram out of his tent and into the warm, clear night. He drew his attention to the stars, and Abram gazed up at those stars, and God said, A son's coming. A son is coming from your own body who will be your heir. Count the stars if you can, and your offspring will be 
just like those stars. And Abram believed the Lord and the Lord credited it to him as righteousness. Now, verse 6 is one of the most significant verses in the Bible. You need to have it underlined. You, you need to have it highlighted. This is the first mention of belief in the Bible. This is the first instance of the word believe. And what it tells us and what makes it significant is, is that God declared Abram righteous based on his belief in a promise. Abram was a, went a sinful, weak, faltering human being just like us and his belief was credited to him as righteousness. God declared Abram righteous. God, acting as the supreme judge, applied all the rights and privileges of righteousness to Abram. Despite Abram's own inability to be righteous, the Lord applied righteousness to Abram's life based on Abram's belief, his faith. God said, in effect, Abram, give me the password to your bank account. Give me the password to your bank account. And God logged in and deposited into Abram's moral bank account his perfect righteousness. Abram believed God regarding the promise of a coming son and righteousness was credited to him. That son appeared in history, died on a cross for our sins, rose again. And today God calls us to believe in the Son who has already come. And in doing so, it will be credited to us as righteousness. When you place belief in Jesus... Your trust for righteousness in Him, not in yourself. God credits your faith as righteousness. Revisit that confession you made. Revisit that confession that you once made. That moment at that time in your life when you confessed Jesus Christ when you confessed your belief and faith in Him. Now, sometimes the best commentary on verses in the Bible are other verses in the Bible. So I want to show you two passages of Scripture. The first one is Galatians chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. Listen to Galatians chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. Just as Abram believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness... Know then that it is those of faith who are sons of Abraham. Did you get that? That's us. We are sons of Abraham. Abraham is our spiritual father. We are his sons and daughters. Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness, know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of of Abraham. Thank you Galatians chapter 3 verses 6 and 7 for explaining Genesis chapter 15 verse 6 to us. But there's another passage and that is found in Romans chapter 4 and I want to turn there in my Bible now and, and, and I want to read to you Romans chapter 4 and this whole fourth chapter of Romans really is about Abram and the faith that he had. So let me, let me read Romans chapter 4 beginning in verse 1. What shall we say was gained by Abraham our forefather according to the flesh? For if Abram was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abram believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. You see, Romans chapter 4 verse 3 is quoting Genesis chapter 15 and verse 6. 
Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as due. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Do you know what those verses tell us? Those verses tell us is that salvation is not something you get because you worked to earn it. Salvation is a gift from God. It is not your good deeds. It's a gift from God. Now move on down into Romans chapter 4 verse 9 says, Is this blessing then only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? For we say that faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it counted to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being circumcised so that righteousness would be counted to them as well. Now, let me quickly explain that. Abraham was declared righteous before or after he was circumcised. This verse says before he was circumcised. In fact, that's accurate. Fourteen years before he was circumcised, Abraham was declared righteous. He believed he was saved. Circumcision was just an outward sign of being saved, an outward sign of his inward condition. And here's what it tells us. Salvation is not something you get because you perform religious acts. Salvation is not something you get because you perform religious acts. We often think baptism. We need to be baptized in in, in order to be saved. No, no. If you believe you are saved and then baptism is just an outward sign of something that has already taken place in your life, just like circumcision. Then there's one more. Verse 13 says, Romans chapter 4, verse 13, For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be an heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness which comes by faith. 430 years before the Ten Commandments were given, Abraham was made righteous. And so, listen, Abram was not saved because he kept the Ten Commandments. Abram was not saved because he obeyed God's laws. Salvation is not something you get because you obey God's laws. Keeping the commandments will not save you. So, salvation is not something you get because you work for it. Salvation is not something you get because you perform religious acts. Salvation is not something you get because you obey God's commands. No, no. You are saved. The same way Abram was saved. Because he believed in the promise of God. Here it is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Believe and you are saved. You see the bottom line It's not enough to be religious. You have to be righteous. And how do you receive righteousness? You put your trust in Jesus Christ. Take a moment and go back to that confession. You who know Christ as Savior and Lord, take a moment and go back to that time when you confessed Jesus. You said, I'm not going to be saved by obeying commands. I'm not going to be saved by religious acts. I'm not going to be saved because I I, I do enough good deeds. But you came to that place where you made the confession, my salvation comes because my faith and trust is in Jesus Christ. Every walk of faith needs a time of renewal. And that renewal means you take a trip back in time and revisit your confession. Every walk of faith 
needs a time of renewal, a time to recommit, time to rededicate yourself to your Lord. You remember your condition. You revisit your confession. And now we move to the third action. The third action in a time of renewal. Look at Genesis chapter 15, verses 7 through 21. I'll, I'll not read that, but, but here's what you need to know. What, what is described here is known as cutting a covenant. Today, our agreements are written on ink and paper, validated with signatures, stamped by a notary, and, and taken to the courthouse. But in Abram's day, you cut a covenant. It involved shedding of blood and the binding of two people or two parties to a promise. Let me read. Genesis 15 beginning in verse 7. And, and he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of the Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But Abram said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I will possess it? And God said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he brought him all these, cut them in half, and laid each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in half. Now, what would normally happen would be that those two parties would cut those animals in half and lay them out and that the people then, the two parties, would walk between the dead animals through the blood. And the idea was if one fails to keep his end of the contract, they deserve the same fate as these animals. And so God and Abram walked between the animals together. Right? Wrong. Wrong. Verse 17 says, When the smoke was going down, excuse me, when the sun was going down and it was dark, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. Now listen to me. God Himself passed between the parts of this sacrifice. The Lord God Almighty came to Abram in the form of a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, and God made the covenant with Himself. God walked between the pieces of those animals. It was an unconditional covenant. It didn't depend on anyone else. There were no conditions for Abram to meet. There were no functions for Abram to perform. It was a covenant of grace from the generous heart of God. Now, where was that covenant ratified? On Calvary's cross. On Calvary's cross, God the Son ratifies the covenant made by God the Father and writes across that covenant the word done. It's done. I've told you this before. Let me tell you again. Every other world religion could be summed up into one word, do. Do. You want to be right with God? Do this. You want to go to heaven when you die? Do this. You want the blessing of God on your life? Do this. You want inner peace, tranquility, joy? Do this. I don't care what religion of the world you want to look at or study, it can be boiled down to that one word, do. Christianity is entirely different. You want to be right with God? You want to have inner peace and joy? You want to have the blessing of God? There's one word, Done. It's already been done for you. On the death, in the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Done. There's another word written on that cross. Gone. Your sins are gone. That's the covenant God's made with you. That, that, that's the covenant he, He's made. I should say, not with you, but, but for you. He's made the covenant with Himself 
for you, ratified by His Son. Every walk of faith needs a time of renewal and your renewal calls for you to re-engage with God's covenant. So, in your heart and mind, go back to Calvary this morning. Go back to Calvary this morning and reconnect with the Christ who loves you. Say to Him, Lord, I trust You. Lord, I'll live without fear. Lord, I know that You're in control of my circumstances. Lord, I believe You died for me. In the summer of 1961, a Bible conference was held in Montrose, Pennsylvania. During one of the sessions, an opportunity was given for people to give a personal testimony. Several people stood and shared the things the Lord had done for them and taught them. And and then an elderly gentleman rose to his feet. And he told of his conversion experience. He told how Jesus had saved him. How he simply believed and put his trust in Jesus. And in describing that day when he met Christ, he said, it seemed like heaven came down and glory filled my soul. John Peterson was leading music at that Bible conference. He wrote down the words the elderly gentleman had said. And later that week, John Peterson would write, Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling, with joy I am telling, He made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away, my night was turned to day, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Some of us, need to renew our faith in Jesus Christ today. Remember that day when heaven came down and glory filled your soul? You need to remember your condition. You need to revisit your confession. And you need to re-engage with God's covenant the one He offers you, made for you, ratified by His Son on Calvary's cross. And then I'm talking to some of you today who need to believe for the first time. You need to come to faith for the first time. You need to put your full weight down upon Jesus Christ and trust Him for your eternal destiny for the first time. Would you do that right now? You can. You can come to Christ right where you are, right now. If you simply bow your head, pray a prayer like this. Heavenly Father, I know that you love me. I also know, Father, I've broken your law. I've sinned. I'm helpless. Father, I'll never work this out all by myself. And so today, Father, I'm believing that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I'm believing that the work has been done and my sins are gone. I'm believing Christ's death on the cross forgives my sin. And Father, I'm I'm committing my life to You. Committing my life to You today. It's the best I know how. That is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer just then or something like it or maybe that's just the desire of your heart, would would you let me know? My, My email is simple. Send me an email. Let me know. I prayed with you. I want to pray with you. I'd like to know more about what it means to trust Christ. My email is simply pepper 
at fbcmv.com. fbcmv.com. I, I, I want to hear from you. Would you do that, please, if you would write me this week, pepper at fbcmv.com. Thank you so much for watching and listening today. For those of you that already know Christ as Lord and Savior, I pray that today's been a day when you rededicated, recommitted yourself. Your walk of faith needs a time of renewal. And I pray today it's been just that. God's best on you this week. I hope you'll tune in again next Sunday and watch, listen to our streaming service here at First Baptist Church. I want to thank you for watching today. I'm so glad you tuned in, logged on to our streaming service here at First Baptist Church in Mount Vernon, Texas. If you have made a decision to become a Christ follower, if you've made a decision to trust Christ, I would love to hear about that decision. Would you email me? My email address is simple. It's pepper at fbcmv.com. That's pepper at fbcmv.com. Or if you have questions about what it means to be a Christ follower, to be a Christian, please email me and I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Also, if you have prayer requests, if you want me to pray with you about something, email me as well. I'll be glad to take your prayer request and we can pray about it together. And again, thank you for watching today. If you do not have a church home, I hope you consider First Baptist Church, Mount Vernon, Texas, your church home. God's best on you today.